Well, I've never tried it, I can only imagine that running a movie franchise must be hard. I mean, not only do you have to go through all the effort to make a movie and hope that people want to watch, but also hope that you have enough interesting content to have audiences coming back for more. While it would be nice for all of our favorite franchises to be successful and always care to exactly what we want, the truth is that sometimes franchises evolve over time and series go in different directions. Such is the case with the movie I'm going to talk about today, which seems to have audiences a bit divided. So, what do I think after having watched Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Let's dive in. Serving as a sequel to 2015's Jurassic World, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom takes place three years after the destruction of the park at the hands of the rampaging dinosaurs. Though the island has long been abandoned, the awakening of a volcano that threatens to wipe out all the dinosaurs causes Claire Deering to become involved once again. Put in charge of an expedition to rescue the remaining dinosaurs on the island and save them from extinction, she seeks out Owen Grady to help her track down Blue, Owen's lead raptor that he raised since birth. However, when it becomes clear that not all is as it seems and there is a conspiracy at hand, Claire and Owen will have to ensure that the evil forces at work don't throw our planet into chaos. Now, right off the bat, let me start with the negatives. If you have seen any reviews or heard anything about the movie, then you may have noticed that people are being pretty hard on it. From calling it stupid to unnecessary, a lot of people were disappointed with this newest entry in the series. And you know what? I'm just gonna say it, but yeah. This movie is dumb. I mean, that should be obvious, what with the usual track record of huge summer blockbusters, but it is. There are some subplots that feel unnecessary, a child thrown into the mix that no one asked for and didn't really add anything, decisions made by characters that can be a bit baffling, and villains that are super paper thin and basically just evil caricatures. If you're expecting this thoughtful movie about the implications of genetic engineering and cloning, then this is not what you're gonna get. Trading nuance for over-the-top action, I can see why this film isn't for everyone. Therefore, if some were to walk out of this movie disappointed with how the series has gone in a more action-oriented direction and how the plot is very thin, I don't blame them. However, with that being said, I really like this movie and found it to be super entertaining. Filled with crazy set pieces and action and dinosaurs galore, this film is a great popcorn muncher. I mean, when I go into a Jurassic Park movie, I am excited to see dinosaurs, and this movie definitely delivers on that. Not only do we get lots of great people versus dinosaur moments, but plenty of dinosaur versus dinosaur stuff as well. Anyone who loved watching Blue in action during the first movie will be thrilled to see that the best dinosaur waifu is back and ready to kick ass. Just like Tuxedo Mask rushing in out of nowhere to help out Sailor Moon, Blue has Owen's back. Except like, actually useful, which is nice. And oh yeah, while no one can totally compete with the Blue slash Owen dynamic, Owen and Claire feel like a pretty good team in this one. While I felt that in the first, their team map and romance thing felt a bit forced, here it feels like the two leads have a better chemistry this time around. So with all that being said, where does that leave us? Well, while I wouldn't say this is the best movie ever, what with it having quite a few problems here and there and not being for everyone, I do still think it is an enjoyable film I would recommend. If you want to see some cool CGI dinosaurs, over the top action, a new bloodthirsty dino threat, and of course, best girl blue, then you will probably have a ton of fun with this one. But hey, that's just my opinion. And remember, don't take anything I say too seriously. After all, I'm just a wannabe reviewer. Thanks for watching. Oh, actually, before I go, there is one more thing I want to mention, and that is a Kickstarter over on Kickstarter.com being run by Robin Paris of The Room. For anyone who has spent some time on my channel, then you know that I have talked about Tommy Wiseau's The Room before and enjoy the media surrounding it. Well, this particular Kickstarter titled The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? is to help fund some episodes of a mockumentary series following the actors from the movie. If you would like to pitch in and help, I would really appreciate it. The project is currently around 86% funded and ends on Friday, so I hope we can get this thing funded. And if you're somehow watching this after the Kickstarter is over, I'll try to add in some info in the description of whether or not it got funded. So feel free to check that out. Anyways, as always, thanks for your time and thank you for watching.